Now, if I was to be working with this, like imagine, you know, I'm, I'm building a scene, I've got like a piece of candy, it doesn't look much like a piece of candy at the moment, but if I was, one control that I would want easy access to would be the density, the amount of sugar that's on this. And the only way currently to access that would be to go back to my geometry nodes tab, look through here, try and familiarize myself with the layer and then go like, ah, oh, the density, there it is. That's the value that I'm looking for. That's not a very fast way to work. I want, an, I want to make that value accessible. And that can be done by simply dragging the value to this empty input right here. And when I do that, you can see that it's disappeared from that density slot there, the value's gone. It's fed into here and now it's visible and changeable from my modifier stack. And that modifier stack is, is it's visible everywhere, right? It's much more accessible. I can find it in the layout mode, any mode that I want. Um, and so it's a lot easier to work with. Another value that I'd probably want easy access to is the scale value, the min and the max of this, uh, this random, uh, sorry, random scale at the bottom here. So I'm gonna connect my min and my max to these empty points here, which means that they're now accessible. Um, and I could also actually change the names that appear here so that I can, so that they're more easy for me to remember. So if with this group input selected, if I hit N on my keyboard and then in group, select any of these inputs and I can type in a new name. So I could type in scale min, scale max, density. I could just, I could even call it sugar density like that. So now they're much easier for me to, uh, to think about and remember. Speaking of, uh, you know, working with a scene and thinking about this as, a, as an object, um, this object here, we might not realize it yet, but this is a huge piece of candy. It's like the size of, uh, of an adult person standing here. Uh, two by two meters is, is huge. Now, a lot of beginners wonder why it matters that things are out of scale because it's like, you know, if you could put a, a plane here, it could look like a piece of candy on a floor. It doesn't really matter. But it will when you're using a camera um, because the depth of field will be wrong because it's at a different scale. And also if you're using objects from an asset library like Polygon or anywhere else, um, you're dropping stuff in there. It's, it's just all gonna be out of whack and it's just, you never wanna do that. So let's rescale this to something that makes sense. So from two meters, let's get it down to two centimeters, which is a 100th of the size. So S.01 enter. And you can see that it's now down to two centimeters in size. And I gotta do the same with my sugar crystal, S.01. And I'm gonna hit Alt G on that sugar crystal just so that it snaps to the center there and then I'll move that to the side. All right, now you might remember we have, we've forgotten to do something and that's because whenever you change the scale, you have to apply the scale. So I'm gonna hit Control A, apply scale. Something weird's happened there and that's because it's now using the wrong scale for my sugar crystal. I gotta do the same there. Apply the scale, control A, scale. Okay, so we've got the, the, the sizing right, but now our sugar jube looks uh, very, very different. There is now only two pieces of sugar there instead of what we had before. And why is that? The reason for that is that this density value here for this, uh, the distribute points on faces here, that density value, that's not the count. It's not like it's 173 sugar crystals it's putting on there. It's, that's the density in terms of like the world volume. So if you can imagine um, you've got like right here on our cube, there is a one by one meter cube around it, right? That's the size of like a volume for this density value. And then within that volume, there are these little points, okay? And so it has to line, like the size of my cube inside of that volume um, is basically wherever there is a point within it, it will actually appear on the on the face. But if it, if it can't find any, then it just won't appear. So you really have to crank up this value a lot so that you get more and more points here. Um, an easy way that I actually like to think of it, <laughs> more visual example, is like think of a truck on the highway, right? And it's driving along. The size of that truck, it's gonna be hitting a lot of insects that are gonna land on the windshield of, uh, of that truck. Uh, but a smaller car, it's gonna hit less insects. There's gonna be less insects because it's occupying less space. So think of it like that. We've now got a much smaller object. So you would need a lot more insects to be hitting the size of that car. So this density value here needs to be cranked. But even as I'm like moving my mouse here, increasing it and increasing it, increasing it, oh, I finally get one extra piece. 
that is not an artist friendly tool. I would have to like come in here and then go like, all right, I'll type in a zero, one more zero, maybe five instead of one, maybe nine. That's just an annoying way to work. We instead can do this extra zero multiplication inside of geometry nodes between our sugar density and our density value here. So let's uh, set this back to something a little more sensible, like 200. Zoom in on my uh, my sugar tube here, and then I'm going to add in a utilities math node. So right in here between this sugar density and the density, drop it in, and instead of add, I wanna change that to multiply. Then this value here, remember those zeros that I added? I'm gonna type in one, zero, 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 zero. And now it's multiplying 200 by 10,000, which is two, 2 million, <laughs> roughly, is that, hang on. Am I way off? I'm just trying to think, do it in my head. But it, it hang on, let's, I'm gonna subtract one so it's easy for me to think about. It. That is like, this is 200,000. If I was to set this to 200,000, be the exact same when I drop this in here, right? Because 200 times 1,000, 200,000. All right, and then I add another zero. So yeah, it'd be like two million. Yeah, 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 I was right. Um, <laughs> when I do that, this value here, you can see, it's a lot more user-friendly. I can move my mouth back and forth and it's, yeah, it's just basically it's multiplying this so that it's more approachable for a small scaled object. Speaking of making things more user friendly, um, something else you quickly realize when you start getting into geometry nodes is that once you start building out and you add more and more nodes to it, it becomes more and more time consuming to remember, like what do these values do again? Like, oh, it's the min, it's a random value, it's going to rotation. Okay, it's the rotation and the scale, you know, uh, randomizing rotation and scale. So, it would make it a lot easier for us if we could just label it so that we can see things and remember what they do. So there is a function, layout frame, which will let you add in a frame and then you can drag something into that frame there. Um, it's just a little time consuming to do that. If you have the node, whoops, node wrangler add-on install, which it, it comes with Blender, you just have to enable it, check that box. Then with your selected nodes uh, selected, you can hit shift P and it will automatically add a frame around it. Um, Node Wrangler does a lot more than that, um, but everyone should have it enabled. It's, it's just amazing. It's used so, by so many people. Um, but anyways, with that frame, if I hit N and then go to Node, where it has label, I can type in anything. So I could type in uh, randomize scale and rotation. Ha, and then I can do the same here. With this here, just remembering what does that multiply thing do again? It is multiply density for small scale. Cool, all right, now let's make this uh, piece of candy look like a sugar tube instead of a box, it's getting annoying. So let's add in a subsurf modifier. And remembering what I said at the start, it works top to bottom. So the reason this is all out of whack is that it's doing the subsurf after the geometry nodes. So reverse that, and now it's in the correct order. It's applying it to that. And I'll set this to viewport three. And then just to make this uh, look more like a sugar dupe, which has a flat bottom, in edit mode, I'm gonna hit control R to add in a loop cut, loop cut, click, and then move it down like so. And you've now got the appearance of like a flat bottom. And I could like even taper the top a little bit, make it look more like a little sugar dupe. Um, and I like the origin point flat on the floor like that. Very nice. Also, everything has a bevel. Right, especially for this piece of sugar here, if I wanted to catch the light reflected in different ways, it would be good if it was beveled. So I'm just gonna add a bevel modifier to my tiny, tiny, tiny little sugar crystal. I just have to set this scale to like 0 0.00, no, an extra zero. There we go, so it's like a one millimeter bevel or something. Let's go two, there we go, nice. So now it's got a little bevel on each of those sugar crystals, very nice. Something you might have noticed looking at the cube, the jube, jube, it sounds so wrong to say jube. It's like I'm saying, it's like a, like a, I don't know, like a derogatory term for jube. That's what it sounds like, the jube. Uh, anyway, um, so with my jube, um, you might notice that uh, there is sugar crystals overlapping, right? Like intersecting like crazy, like right here. Um, and the reason for that is that just random distribution, it's just by chance, some of those points are gonna appear where other points already are. So if we change it from random to Poisson disk, we'll have more control. Now when you do that, it will disconnect 
this density because you've now got a, something called density max instead of density. So just connect it to density max and we'll get it exactly the way it was before, right? Random pass on disk, it's the same now. Um, but importantly, we get distance min. So what distance min will do is that for each point, it will then put a radius around it. And then if it finds points within that radius, it will delete them, right? So you'll only get that one point. So this value here, if I set this to 0 0.00, because we're working on a very small scale, 0 0.001. Okay, nothing's really happened. Let's go two. Ha ha. You can see we've now lost one of those, uh, those sugar crystals. There is still quite a lot of overlap. And actually, there's not really a way to get rid of the intersection completely because the points, it doesn't take into a point uh, take into account the scale, which is a random value that we've put in there. Um, it just it just sees each point as equal. So um, it's really, a, a, yeah, it's a trade-off. If I set this to like a high value, like if I set this to like one or something, um, you don't get intersection, but you also get what looks like uniform distribution and it just looks fake. So it's really, you know, you got to try to take a trade-off. Like, do you want it to look too uniform or do you want there to be some intersection? Um, in my case, I want there to be some intersection. I don't want to get rid of all of it because then it just looks too uniform. So that looks, yeah, it looks a lot better. I don't want to add like an extra 20 minutes to this tutorial to explain materials. So for the sugar tube, I'm going to use this material. And for the sugar crystal, I'm going to use this material. If you download the dot blend in the description, then go to file append, uh, you find that dot blend that you downloaded and then go material. And then you're just going to add in those uh, two materials, candy and then sugar crystal append. Then with my, uh, Jube selected, I'm going to go sugar, not sugar crystal, uh, candy, and then for the sugar crystal, sugar crystal. Then I'll just add in a plane and let's just move the lamp a little bit closer to it. Like over here or something. Let's probably set it to a lot lower intensity. And now I'm going to switch to cycles, GPU, and I'll just crank that up a little bit. And there we go. Something else you probably want to adjust because you've got so many sugar crystals here. Um, it'll it'll max out the number of transparencies because it's set to eight. So if you just set that to 50 and then also the total to 50, um, then it will actually come through a lot cleaner. And I'm going to move my camera to this position, control alt number pad zero. Um, and then I have to set my camera to change the clip start to be smaller like that. And that's just, I just wanted you to see how it looks you know, even though this is a geometry nodes tutorial. Um, yeah. And then I'll just, uh, my favorite trick, set this from look from none to medium high contrast. And everyone's like, oh no, you shouldn't do that. Cause it's like just doing a lazy thing. Like, no, that's a proper transform. This will be a lot better than anything you try to do in Photoshop. I guarantee you, cause it's working with all the color data. People should use this more and people don't. So you can check your homework by downloading the dot blend in the description, which will have the finished node set up and all that stuff that you can um, play around with. And this is the finished result on a donut. I am again raising money for Blender. So this is available as an NFT. It's part of a series I'm calling the Baker's Dozen and all of the proceeds are gonna be reinvested back into Blender to make this software that we all love so much better. If you like the video, hit like. And if you want to see more videos like it, hit subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you in a future video.